Coburg, Ontario, two hours outside Toronto, brims with small town charm. But on Friday nights, just steps off the picture postcard main street, a crisis comes into view. We have naloxone on the table, we have... Harm reduction worker Ashley Smoke is busy arranging supplies for a pop-up safe site. There's alcohol swabs here. An unsanctioned place for local drug users to inhale, with assistance at hand in case of an overdose. It just seemed that there was more and more need and more and more people dying. There's just like so many people that are struggling and no one to help. Originally there was a tent until the mayor sent bylaw officers to threaten fines. Now Smoke and other volunteers offer support in an alleyway. They're battling a changing epidemic. Most drug users now inhale rather than inject in part because health officials say it reduces the risk from an increasingly toxic supply. Still, the deaths continue, with many dying away from help alone. Coburg, home to 20,000, has seen a dozen fatal overdoses over the last year and a half. John, one of the Friday night smokers, says it's a challenge to simply stay alive. I think we need to have some place safe for people to go and smoke, rather than being out here with kids on the street and the police and everything, it's just too, it's too much. It's way too much. Last year, there were more than 7,300 opioid overdose deaths across Canada, the majority involving smoking. But the trend isn't new. In British Columbia, inhalation overtook injections back in 2017, causing 56% of drug deaths in 2021. Ontario's numbers flipped five years ago, with smoking accounting for 68% of fatalities by late 2022. A message the province's chief coroner keeps trying to drive home. Oh, this is a significant number uh, of deaths. This is far in excess of motor vehicle collisions. These are young people. 75% uh, are between 30 and 59. 75% are male. And, uh, and, and this is something that's preventable. The setup for an inhalation site is simple. It's basically a room with a large fan meant to whisk away whatever smoke is inside. Yet this privately funded one at Casey House, a specialized HIV hospital in Toronto, is the only legal indoor inhalation site in all of Ontario, and one of just five across the country. Easy to build, but surprisingly hard to get approved, says Casey House's chief executive officer. The piece that seemed to be the barrier initially was around the Smoke Free Ontario Act. And that took some time to understand from the government's perspective whether they were going to allow us uh, to use, have people use illicit drugs in the space. Canada has dozens of safe sites for injection oral and nasal use, and there's no question that they work. Since 2017, those in BC have recorded 25,000 overdoses, but just one death. So why is adding smoking proving so complicated? In my opinion, it is red tape. Vancouver's Patrick McDougall helps community organizations across the country set up consumption sites. He says neither Ottawa nor the provinces are showing enough urgency. We need more resources to be able to address the crisis. Uh, the folks that we've lost are folks that I love and care about. And uh, I wish we did have a response that was far more comprehensive, similar that we had to the pandemic, the COVID pandemic. So uh, oxygen's one of the most important things in an overdose. Um, just making There are solutions, breathing. like this hybrid indoor-outdoor smoking site on Vancouver's downtown east side, one of 16 now open across the province. The operation doesn't need to be expensive. These are life-saving facilities. Um, saving lives is, is the most important thing. And um, I feel sad for, for communities that uh, because of stigma, have a lot of trouble getting these sites. We asked the Alberta and Ontario governments about adding smoking to existing safe consumption sites. Dan Williams, Alberta's Minister of Mental Health and Addiction, said his focus is on treatment and holding criminals accountable. Sylvia Jones, Ontario's Minister of Health, didn't respond to repeated requests. All of which leaves Ashley's smoke feeling like people in power somehow still don't grasp what's happening in Canada's streets. They really think that, that we're the problem. The community is unsafe and we're trying to help.
So, Jonathan, thousands of deaths across Canada every year. It seems many could be prevented by this approach. So what's standing in the way? Red tape is a big roadblock, Ian. For example, here in Ontario, the funding agreements for existing safe sites specify that provincial money can only be used for injection, oral, and nasal services. So it's just a matter of adding one more word, inhalation. But there's also a community dimension. Harm reduction sites are sometimes controversial. We've just seen a fatal random shooting outside of one in Toronto, which came after months of residents complaining about the site causing rising crime in the neighbourhood. And politics. Alberta's UCP government has been closing safe sites, instead emphasizing treatment and recovery, while the federal Conservatives have been trying to make measures like a safer drug supply a ballot box issue. So there's a number of hurdles. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan.